If you're under 40, it's a no brainer. You should go to medical school over PA school. That extra five years in school and residency is nothing in the grand scheme of things. Uh, I would wholeheartedly disagree with that as somebody who was 27 when I chose to become a PA and now at 35 practicing for three years, I uh, couldn't be happier with my choice. Do I still sometimes wish I had gone to med school? Well, honestly, no. Uh, do I wish I had like that I was a physician and not a PA? Kind of. But everything that goes into that, I just know that everything that I have in my life now would be totally different if I had gone the med school route. So the question is, what do you want for your life? What would make you happy? What does make you happy? The first thing is first is, uh, does your personality even allow you to be in a role like a PA where you are very highly educated, you are very highly trained, you have a lot of knowledge, the more experience you get, you know, the more experience of a provider you are, you have a lot of experience, you do things the way that you want to do them, you know, you have your own practice style, you have the things that you prefer to do in certain situations. I know it's all vague, but you do get a lot of mastery over your own medical practice as a PA, especially in certain roles like mine, like where I'm the sole provider in the clinic. Uh, you know, I'm essentially functioning independently enough, unless something happens that I really need physician oversight, which is rare. So is that something that your personality is going to allow in the long term, you know, in five years, in 10 years, in 30 years of practice? Are you going to be OK being a physician assistant? Are you going to be OK always deferring to a physician? Are you going to be OK not having a terminal degree? not having the highest degree that you could possibly get in a field or in the field of medicine. Are you okay with that? Be honest. Some people are not. Some people, especially intelligent, capable, driven people, they cannot handle that. They must have a terminal degree. They must have that piece of paper on the wall that says, that says they've essentially done the most that they can in progressing in this career. Some people are like that. How do I know? Because I know a lot of those people. Like for instance, I'll give you a perfect story. Somebody that I was very, very close with at one time uh, was in a PhD program. And you know, this person had a lot of anxiety over like making a living as a PhD, which is harder than you would think. Uh, and this person, you know, super duper smart girl, very, very motivated, very driven, very talented, very personable, just like a fantastic person, a uh, fantastic professional. And this person had a lot of anxiety about making a living, especially a comfortable living as a PhD. And she knew that I was going to PA school. And I always said like, hey, why not consider maybe PA like a kind of a backup option for you, right? Uh, even after you finish your PhD program, why not do that? It's a much safer career. It'll always be in demand. You'll always make a comfortable living, you know, because this, uh, this person was in a science PhD program, which takes like seven years in her case anyway. Um, and after that, you know, if you're lucky, you might get a professorship, you might get a job where you're making like 80K. If you have tenure, you've been a professor for a while, maybe 100K, maybe 120 if you're lucky, uh, which is what PAs start with is somewhere around there. So, and obviously if you work in industry, like the sky's the limit, you can make half a mil, you can make a million a year, whatever, uh, but that's pretty rare. So this person had a lot of anxiety about how much they're gonna be able to make, the kind of living that they be, would be able to make and whether these seven years and then some would even be worth it. And so I, I told this person, like, why don't you think about maybe PA school, maybe even after you finish your PhD. And this person said, I could never do that because I would always want to be a doctor. I would always want to be the terminal degree. I would always need to have the terminal degree. I would need the last word on things. I just would need to be at the top. And some people's personality is like that. Mine is not at all. Like I want to be collaborative now if it's something that I really know a lot about, and if it's something that I know is the right answer, and I, and I know that I want to do something my way, uh, and I know that my answer is right, like from experience, yes, I will absolutely advocate for it and fight for it. And especially in smaller domains, like when it's my own business, my own thing, uh, then yeah, absolutely. I definitely enjoy like kind of making that decision and knowing that my decision is the best one, and I'm willing to take the risk if it's not, you know, exactly what it is. That's in business. That's not in medicine. In medicine, if I'm even 1% confused, if I'm even 1% uncertain, I like having that backup option of calling my physician, my supervising physician, and asking what they think if I'm doing the thing that's safest for the patient. Okay, so I kind of like having that option of always having somebody kind of that has my back. 
somebody to talk to, somebody to get their opinion. You know, I make a lot of very big decisions myself, and the more I get into practice, the more comfortable I am making those. But I really like having that safety net when it comes to medicine. Now, when it comes to life, when it comes to my real estate investments, when it comes to my business, when it comes to things that I'm ultimately responsible for, yeah, I like having the final say. I like doing things my way. But in medicine, where a lot of people's like health and lives are on the line, not to mention my license and my career and my company and my supervising physician's license, I like having that safety net, and I like that for the rest of my career. I don't care if I'm still doing this when I'm 70. I like having that supervising position. Is it going to be kind of awkward, you know, when I'm a physician assistant wearing scrubs at 70 years old with a big gray beard, you know, and a cane, like, and asking like uh, my supervising physician who's probably like 38, like, hey, doctor, how do you feel about this sinusitis? Is it going to be a little weird, perhaps? But it's only weird if you make it weird. That's the position. That's the job that you have. Just because you're older does not mean that you know more. Just because you're older does not mean that you should be ahead of somebody else. In that particular field, I'm okay being in the PA role for my entire career. Why am I okay with it? Well, because I love medicine. I love practicing medicine. I love learning more and more and more about medicine and helping people through that knowledge. And I also really like having the position always be higher up so that I can ask them things. I like that kind of comfortable middle ground as a mid-level provider. I personally love that when it comes to medicine. Why am I comfortable with that? Because I don't have my whole identity wrapped up in medicine. You know, I don't have my entire identity wrapped up in my career as a medical provider. I have a lot of other things going for me. I have, like I said, my real estate thing. I have this YouTube business and whatnot, the consulting business that came out of it. Uh, and that that I'm trying to build like I have a lot of other factors to my personality and my life and things that I'm very proud of but people that don't have that perhaps I could see them uh, you know kind of making their whole life about medicine and if your whole life is about medicine then yeah so it'd probably be very difficult emotionally to not be the top dog to not have the final say to have to always be in kind of like a lesser role officially than the doctor which yeah I, I could definitely see that being an issue Uh, So it's a very, very important thing for you to realize, am I okay being in this like somewhat subservient role in medicine for my entire career that will never change? Or is that going to really start to shape on me and grind on me and, uh, you know, I won't be able to handle it later in my career? If that's the case, you should go to medical school. I don't care how old you are, 40 or not. 20 or not, 70, it doesn't matter. It's more about what you want out of life and out of your career. And if what you want out of your career is to make that your whole life, to be like, I am a doctor. I am, you know, a medical provider. I am whatever. uh, And that's going to be what you define yourself as. You should definitely become a doctor. If you're okay with that middle ground that I discussed, where you have less responsibility, liability, I guess, because you always have someone on top of you less mastery and knowledge but also more learning opportunities and also where like you just don't make your whole life about it where you have a lot of other aspects to your life and your personality and things that you're trying to build maybe it's a family maybe it's a business maybe it's two businesses maybe it's two businesses and a family you know like i would hope to uh, to have one day then maybe pa is right for you it certainly is for me three years into practice i know that i made the right choice and i hope this uh this little musing while i'm making my omelet was helpful to you